to our mycology journey. In the last video I posted at the end of the video, I showed myself inoculating six bags with lion's mane culture. Off camera, I inoculated just around 60 bags. This video is intended for two purposes. One, to show just how well the DIY laminar flow hood is, how much contamination it stops and whatnot. And two, it's to show how to put growing bags into fruiting conditions. I only put a few of the 60 in fruiting conditions now, just doing some test runs. I'd love to hear feedback. I'd love to hear questions in the comments just shoot I'm, I'm pretty much an open book with these things and i'd love to grow a community around growing lion's mane other hardwood mushrooms and whatnot this is the grow tent that i'll be using for the fruiting conditions it has mylar on the inside and these are the totes that i keep my bags in for incubation this is an old humidifier that i will be using for the fruiting conditions it is an old sunbeam humidifier i'm not sure how good it is but it's just what i've had uh, just laying around the house so that's what i'll be using if it doesn't work i'll let you guys know and i'll look for one that does work on amazon or some other readily available place and I'll make a video out of that to let you guys know. Before any big fruiting that you'll be doing, it's smart to clean your area. Mycelium that's fully colonized is more resilient than uh, substrate. It, it's because of their ability to use antibiotics against each other. However, it's always smart to make sure that you're not uh, introducing a massive amount of spores from another mold that could contaminate the actual fruits. So always clean your grow tent or grow area before doing any grows. Now for fruiting, you'll need a, an outlet timer. I'm using an analog one. Uh, you can get newer ones that are digital, but I just stick with the analog because it's pretty cheap. If one of the tabs are depressed, that means that the outlet should be on. There's no set rule that I'm going by right here for figuring out the timing for the humidifier. I'm just going based off of feeling what, what I think would work. Each tab is around 15 minutes, so you gotta think 15 minutes of humidity on, you want, you know, maybe an hour or 30 minutes for it to dissipate or to go on the bricks. Before plugging in your timer, you wanna make sure that it's set right. So make sure that the timing is right on it, and you also wanna make sure that the switch that's usually on one is timer on rather than outlet so that the timer is actually being used. Uh, this is important for any sort of growing that you'll be doing in your lifetime. Make sure you fill up your humidifier before plugging it in. Uh, I'm using distilled water. Uh, you don't have to use distilled water, you can use tap. However, I, I just don't like the idea of using chlorine or like other things that they put in tap water into my mushrooms, but that's a choice thing. It probably won't harm your mushrooms if you use tap water. Just harvesting blocks that were from a previous grow that wasn't the best. These will just be dried out and the blocks will be uh, discarded because they've already gone through a few flushes. Now this is the big reveal. As you can see, we have a few bags in this bin. Uh, this was one bin that I made sure to allow the bags to have more breathing capability so the filter patches were not covered, it wasn't elastic band or anything. I found that if you have more space in the tote, if you're gonna be using totes for incubation, if you want fast growth, you wanna allow them to have oxygen. Now the issue is if you have too much oxygen, you can have early fruiting and it'll go through your filter patch. This is a study for incubation. I have a few different totes and I'm storing them in a few different ways. Uh, this, this tote was given less oxygen, but it was in longer than the previous tote. As you can see, they're at pretty equal levels, so I'm deciding to fruit them together. I, I ha didn't fruit all of the ones that were in this pink tote. There's still a few left. However, I've not seen any contamination from any of the bags so far, uh, none in the big black totes beside there. It's uh, pretty significant how little contamination but how well the DIY laminar flow hood work for these bags. When you're putting your bags into fruiting conditions here you want to allow space between the bags for the fruits. And this is important so that there's clearance between them and they're not uh, getting caught up with each other. As you can see in this 
this box as well there was no contamination from my inspection they weren't fully colonized so i'm just allowing them to colonize further but yeah no contamination in any of the boxes so far an important trigger for fruiting is lighting. It's not the most important, but it's still important to get down. The whole thing with lighting is it provides a few things. It increases the heat so that water can evaporate, which triggers another fruiting trigger. That's evaporation of water. But you want a 12 hour on, 12 hour off cycle. Some people have said they can do it with 24 hour on, but I just like keeping it as natural as you can. So this part of the video is just showing major mess up that I actually did. Between the last shot and this shot, the tent was actually put into a week long of darkness. I was hoping for the cultures to actually get a little bit more densely white before I fruited them officially. But that led to the fruits coming through the filter patches on the bags. So right here, I'm just putting on a fresh scalpel to be able to harvest those fruits. Those fruits are not the greatest. They're actually more of a consistency of mycelium. So you wouldn't, I wouldn't want to eat these. Uh, you definitely could they weren't contaminated or anything but what I like to do with them at this point is dry them out so that you can keep them for long-term storage you're not gonna be really tasting them it's more of like a, a thing for the nerve growth factor that lion's mane gives if you're wanting to cook up your lion's mane you're gonna want to find a lion's mane that has a fleshy veal texture it's a very delicate texture and you'll, you'll notice it when you touch it it's actually quite astonishing to feel. This is the best type of mushroom to cook up, the fleshy type. Here I'm just laying out the thinly sliced lion's mane that I just harvested. This is so that the water will evaporate off of the mushroom. You could do this, or if you have a food dehydrator, you can just do the same thing, cut it up, and then put it on the food dehydrator. Food dehydrators are a little bit better because it gets them uh, more dry, which is better for long-term storage. I recommend using cellophane instead of wax paper. The cellophane allows more of the water to evaporate. It seemed to me that the wax paper held on to the water, which was not great. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Uh, you can like the video if you want. Uh, you can leave a comment, a question, feedback. Uh, that would be appreciated. You can subscribe for more videos in the future. I will be doing tests on different growing things and whatnot. You guys could leave suggestions if you want. Um, a one video that I'm working on right now is soybean hull pellets versus wheat bran as a uh, substrate. Uh, this is a very important question for growers. So stay tuned and have a great day. Bye.